This is part four of a review of rational functions covering AP Precalculus topics 1.7 through 1.11. If you missed part three, you can either click the link in the upper right hand corner or find the link in the description. In this video, we will practice expanding binomials using Pascal's triangle. If you appreciate this content, please don't forget to hit that like button. Expanding a binomial means taking a binomial that's being raised to a power and rewriting it with an equivalent expression that doesn't have parentheses in it. First of all, that does not mean uh, that we're going to just raise each one of these terms to the fourth power. Uh, this will not equal x to the fourth power plus 256 or x to the fourth power minus 256. No x minus 4 to the fourth power means x minus 4 multiplied four times. If we were going to do this by hand, well, if we were going to do this without Pascal's triangle, we would have to foil this pair and we'd get a trinomial and then we would foil this pair, well, I mean, it would be the same trinomial, but then we would have to multiply those two trinomials together with a whole lot of distributive property. It would take a while. Instead, we can use a shortcut called Pascal's triangle, which can be built starting with a small triangle of ones. And then uh, the two numbers will be added to get a middle number on the next row. Uh, the beginning and end of every row will be a one. For the next row, one plus two is three, two plus one is three, and then the ends are ones. Uh, one more row, uh, one plus three is four, 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 plus 1 is 4, and finish it off with 1's. The numbers in each row are the coefficients of a binomial depending on the degree. The degree of the binomial tells you which row to look at. Uh, first of all, understand that the very top represents uh, the answer to a plus B raised to the zero power. So that's the zero row, don't forget that. Um, we will use this row for the coefficients if we have A plus B uh, to the one power. And we will use this row if we are doing A plus B squared. These will give us the coefficients. And we will use this row if we have a binomial that is being raised to the third power and we will use this row when we have a binomial raised to the fourth power and if we have something higher like the fifth power or the sixth power or the seventh power we would just continue this process and add, add on more rows. In this case uh, it is the fourth power so we are going to use this row right here. So I'm going to start off by copying these numbers down and spacing them out. So here's my 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Now I take the term on the left and I start it off on the left. It begins with the exponent of the binomial, so x to the fourth power. As I move from left to right, I write this factor again and again but each time I decrease the exponent by one. So we will have x to the third power, x squared, x to the one power, x to the zero power, which is one, which we won't write. Then we move on to the term on the right. The term on the right starts off over here on the right. Because of the negative sign, we, we have to put this in parentheses. So we're going to have a negative 4 in parentheses, and again, we begin with the exponent of the binomial. So this will be negative 4 to the fourth power, and uh, this time I move from right to left, decreasing the exponent every time. So negative 4 to the third power, negative 4 squared, negative 4 to the one power, and then negative 4 to the zero power, which I don't need to write. So it's just a matter of simplifying each one of these expressions. First of all, let's evaluate the, the numbers that are being raised to a power. So negative 4 squared is positive 16. 
When you raise a negative number to an even power, the negative goes away. Negative 4 to the third power is negative 64. If you raise a negative number to an odd power, the negative stays. And negative 4 to the fourth power is 256. So I can almost go ahead and write the final answer now. So uh, we clearly have x to the fourth power. Here I have 4 times negative 4. So that's going to be negative 16 uh, x to the third power. And then here I have 16 times 6. So that's plus 96 x squared. This time I will have negative something, whatever 4 times 64 is. So 256 x and then plus 256. Notice that when you have a minus inside of here, the sign of the terms will alternate. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. So this is what you get when you expand the binomial for number 36. For number 37, we have a binomial raised to the fifth power. So I need to pick the correct row from Pascal's triangle. The coefficients will be the 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Apologies to number 38. I'm going to have to go into the airspace of number 38 a little bit here. Now we grab the term from the left and we put it on the left. So we have 2x to the fifth power and then we do that over and over again decreasing the power every time. Now we grab the term on the right and we put that on the right. So I'm going to have uh, times 1 to the fifth power, 1 to the fourth power, 1 to the third power, uh, 1 squared, and 1. None of these purple numbers are changing anything because uh, we have a positive 1 being raised to whatever power is just going to be a positive 1. So none of this will change. I can really just ignore the purple numbers on this one. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to use this step to apply the exponents, these red exponents. For example, 2x to the fifth power is 32x to the fifth power. So I'm going to get 16x to the fourth power and 8x to the third power. Uh, when I got here, I realized that I messed up my parentheses on the first step here. Uh, this should be 2x in parentheses, then squared. And therefore, I will have 4x squared once I apply that exponent. So now for the final answer, I can just multiply these numbers together like 5 times 16, 10 times 8, 10 times 4, and 2 times 5. So this is the answer to number 37. For number 38, we have a binomial raised to the eighth power. I'm going to need an extra row on my chart here. So this is going to be 8 and 28 and 56, 70, and so on. So I need to copy these coefficients over. Okay, this goes off the screen, but there you go. So now I take my term from the left, and I start off on the left with x to the 8th power, x to the 7th power, x to the 6th power, and so on. Then I grab the term from the right, and I write that on the right. So I will have 2 to the 8th power. 2 to the 7th, 6th, 5, 4, 3, etc. Next, we would work out all of these powers of 2, like this. Now we can start writing down the final answer. So x to the 8th power, 2 times 8 is 16, so we have 16. x to the 7th power, 4 times 28 is 112, so we have 112x to the 6th power. 
8 times 56 is 448, so that's 448 x to the fifth power. Similarly, you get the rest of the terms by multiplying 70 times 16, 56 times 32, 28 times 64, 8 times 128, and there's your 256. So here's your answer to number 38. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.